Hey guys, and welcome back to Dog Paw Vlog. Today's video, I'm going to be going over the Barking Control Collar by Good Dog. Now, I was sent this product for review, and I'm just going to kind of go over everything that comes with it, and how to set it up, and how it worked for Bailey, who is my problematic barker. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, so in the package, you do receive instructions and a setup guide. Um, they give you a prompt on when to change the battery. They do provide you with four batteries and two sets of prongs. I have one already on there. There's two different sizes. One is shorter and one is longer, depending on your dog's coat type. And then um, a face plate and then a replacement face plate, which goes over where the battery goes in. Um, this is the collar itself. It has an adjustable strap, so it can fit dogs um, ranging from five to 150 pounds. So <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Uh, the battery pack is installed here. The strap goes over it and then the plate goes over that. So that's everything it came with and now we're going to go through how to set it up. They already give you one of the batteries. Um, you're just gonna pull the collar strap kind of forward, pop off the battery part, don't lose that. All right, so then you're just gonna pop the cover back on and you can adjust the strap. Uh, face plate just kind of clicks into place. There's just these four sides to it and then the four holes there, they just pop right in like that. Now you are ready to um, put your prongs on. These little prongs here just pop on and that's the part that's gonna face your dog's um, body and this is the outside and then the strap just clicks in place. Now it's pretty much ready to go. Um, there are, there's a way to test it and make sure this is the actual sensor here, this hole. Once your dog barks, it lets off a vibration, which then starts the correction levels. Now there are seven correction levels, and the first two are just kind of warning beeps, so it's a very short beep, which I will demonstrate now. That's the first beep. If the dog is quiet for 30 seconds, it always restarts to the lowest level at one. If the dog barks within 30 seconds, the levels increase. So this will be level two. So that was longer. Level three. With a buzz. I don't know if you can hear the buzz, hopefully you can, but it was a longer beep and then a tiny little vibration. Level four. Stronger buzz. Five. Definitely a longer buzz. Six. And this will be seven. Okay, so that was all seven levels of intensity. So the beep is supposed to start to condition the dog to understand the beep means that the buzz is coming. So the beep should interrupt the dog from barking and they should learn to not want the beep to happen. It's kind of like the opposite of working for a clicker. Um, the click means you did something good and a treat is coming with the collar. The beep means something bad is coming because it's gotta be fairly unpleasant. It's just, and I mean, it's not a shock collar by any means. It's, it's literally a vibration. It, these two just vibrate um, but it's meant to interrupt the dog from barking. So the dog hopefully learns to stop barking um, by trying to avoid the vibration. I definitely am a positive reinforcement trainer, um, but positive reinforcement to me works better if you are there to administer a click and a treat for your dog at the time that they are doing the behavior. But let's say you let your dog out and they are a chronic barker. If you're not gonna be out there every moment with your dog, positively rewarding them for being quiet, this might be an option if you're facing like problems from like your, your neighbors, homeowners association, landlord, if your dog is barking. Um, I really wouldn't recommend using this on your dog unattended. So it's not like you wanna put this on your dog and then go to work for eight or nine hours um, it's just kind of something you want to maybe try when you're home with them and they learn quickly and you use it while you're there to observe them would be my thing. One other thing I did want to mention, um, while I was demonstrating the different levels, 
the battery prompt did go off. Now, I have had this battery in for weeks, and I will say the one thing I've noticed is that I don't see an option to turn it off to save the battery. So if the battery's in, it's being used constantly because if you have it on your dog, you don't know when your dog's gonna bark. Um, and that, that's why another reason I don't think it's supposed to be something you just keep on your dog all the time. There's no off switch, so you're gonna be replacing the buttons constantly if you have it on them constantly. So when not in use, just go ahead and take the battery out. Thing. Um, so again, you do get these two different size prongs. Uh, if you have a thicker, if your dog has a thicker coat, you do want to shave the area on their neck first. Um, so th this makes the most contact with the skin. If you have a dog with a very thick undercoat, like a Malamute or a Husky, um, shaving it may not be enough. Um, so you still want to use the longer ones because of that un undercoat. Um, you can use this collar for indoor and outdoor use, which I'm going to try to get footage of Bailey at this point. Um, indoor, she will bark at the cats as well as the doorbell or the door knocking. Um, so <laughs> we're going to see if she um, responds. Now she she's used this once. I tried it on her just to try to make sure I set it up correctly. And that whole day she was like, I'm not barking. Like She, <laughs> she stopped barking that day. But now that I haven't been having it on her, She's starting to bark. So I'm going to try to get footage of her without it with the same environmental stimulus, the, the doorbell and whatnot. So you can see her natural reaction and then I'm going to put the collar on her and see how she behaves with the collar on. Alright, so let's go find Bailey and we'll get started. Okay, so we have Bailey on the table here. Mm -hmm. There she is. For fitting the collar, because you want to make sure that the prongs are touching the dog's skin, um, they do recommend a one finger distance in between your dog's neck and the collar strap. So normally if you're fitting a collar, you use like two or three fingers so it's not too tight. Um, this you want a little bit snug so that it works properly and so that the sensor can pick up. So the sensor can pick up the barking. So this is actually already adjusted to her. Um, so this is kind of where it's gonna be going, right above where the voice box is. And so the prongs just fit perfectly there. It snaps behind her head like a normal collar. I can't see, there we go. And then um, there. And I can get, I can actually still get kind of two fingers in there, but you know, one finger comfortably. And then you just want it on either side of her voice box. So she did let out a bark at first and it beeped and then she kind of just did her woof, woof, her little like her breathy ones like how Coco is doing now. So she definitely can tell when she has that on that something is going to happen if she starts barking. So and that was the actual real doorbell and someone knocking. So the collar I would say definitely does a really good job. Um, she does also bark outside and there are some workers down the street so I'm gonna put her outside with it and see if she barks for that as well. So it did just beep when Bam Bam barked, so it is sensitive to just kind of maybe any nearby bark, which would be a problem with training. So she's whining and banging against the fence, which is causing it to go off as well, but she hasn't barked. 
but it may work for that behavior as well. Like if she's jumping up and she's trying to get back in the house and it goes off, it may help to deter that as well. Okay, so my thoughts on the collar, um, I definitely think it works very quickly. Um, again, I had tested this on Bailey a couple of weeks ago just to make sure I had set it up right before I started planning the video. But she did used to bark um, at the cats a lot. Um, even just saying the cat's name, she would bark. She doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> she refuses to bark. If the doorbell rings and someone's really there, she will bark, which I'm actually okay with if someone approaches the house and she barks once or twice. It's the incessant barking when she's outside that's kind of a problem for, you know, you want to be considerate of your neighbors if you have a dog that just barks a lot. But again, I put her outside. She didn't really do anything because she had the collar on. Um, so I think that it's a good testament for that the collar is effective. Um, again, there are other ways to train your pet. Um, if you want to use positive reinforcement, you can get the sound of a doorbell playing. And then when the dog is quiet, click and treat for when they're quiet and then you're going to work up the duration um, by rewarding them and not punishing them. So that's just another option if you're not comfortable with using um, the anti-bark collars. I know a lot of people aren't, um, but I am very pleasantly surprised by how effective and how quick working the collar is. Um, so again, I will put the link for the information down below and I will also link some of their instructional videos because they have quite a few instructional videos as well. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. Bye.